Hi there guys, how you doing? This is me, Chimpanzee that 45 and I'm back today with the next instalment of my FIFA 13 career mode and we go into our first ever competitive game here today against Oldham Athletic in the League Cup and uh, you can see from the team that I'm putting out it's pretty much a first choice team although there are certain players in there such as Cohen and Derbyshire and uh, Coppinger instead of Reed that uh, might not be in the... Uh, a star sing 11 if I had every player fit and ready but nevertheless we go into the game at what's called the Forest Park Stadium but we all know if it's Nottingham Forest it's the city ground against Oldham Athletic and uh, Miguel as captain and uh, let's see how we can do so really what I'm going to have in this episode is three games there's this one and then there's the first league game against Bolton at home and the second league game away to Middlesbrough and uh, you can see we make a decent start we have some chances although if I'm honest there aren't too many chances in this game although we have Daniel Ayala there climbing high and uh, desperately unlucky to not score and I was thinking maybe it might have to go to extra time which would be a bit of a disappointment but uh, you can see here it's one and Miguel just keeps on going won it in the corner and he just keeps running nobody decides to go to it. he lays it off to McGugan who finishes it off with a nice drive and that was a, a rare moment of quality if I'm honest the game was a pretty low standard but uh, nevertheless we win the game by one goal to nil which in my first competitive game I was pretty pleased about and uh, it's a decent win for us to move into the next round and if you remember in the last game we had an offer um, rejected by Reading for Harold and Carnu of 250,000 and Robbie Finley so we decided to up that and go at 575,000 which is 25,000 pounds above his um, above his asking price, his his valuation, if you like. But uh, you can see there that um, actually Akpala, who is the Werder Bremen striker, rejects our offer, so we we don't chase that up. And uh, anyway, going into our first league game of the season, and give Dexter Blackstock and Andy Reid a start. Keep Cohen in the squad, and uh, is it home to a high flying Bolton? Who I don't know if you saw there, but they've actually signed Ricky Lambert, which is uh, interesting. I don't know if that would happen in real life, but. Um, anyway, moving on to the highlights, and they do score first, and uh, guess who? Ricky Lambert, their new signing. That's quite an interesting one, actually, Ricky Lambert from Southampton to Bolton, especially when Southampton have just been promoted. But uh, the first half was a really, really poor one. We couldn't get into it at all. Everyone was uh, losing the ball softly. There were lots of loose touches, and... Uh, in contrast, the second half we were absolutely brilliant. We started really well. There you can see Billy Sharp laying it off to Dexter Blackstock, who shot wide. Billy Sharp was really the hub of everything, and here he is again, lays it off to Henry Lansbury, who finishes nicely with a low drive into the far corner. And Billy Sharp is an absolutely brilliant player, and it's a shame he's out on loan uh, to us from Doncaster because he was the key to everything. We have a decent chance there with Dexter Blackstock. We actually do score, but it's offside. And uh, what do you know, Bolton then come up the other end and uh, they it was a bit poor this goal really because as you can see there the defender gets completely the wrong side and uh, David and Go scores a decent header but I was really disappointed with that because I thought that you know we should have done better. Brought Matt Derbyshire on and he had the same effect as he always has, he was industrious and working hard and Billy Sharp somehow hit the bar there so unfortunately we do lose by two goals to one. But you can see there that Reading accepts our offer of Robbie Finley and £575,000 uh, for Hal robson Carney, the left midfielder. And uh, he demands £4,000 a year, uh, a year, <laughs> £4,000 a week and a four-year contract. So we decided to go for that. And uh, I decided to look for a new striker because Dexter Blackstock hasn't really impressed me that much. And uh, looking through the young strikers in the Premier League, Connor Wickham is only 1.5 million, he's 19 years of age and he's only 69 rated so he's got plenty of potential and uh, the chief executive says that this deal looks like it could happen so go ahead and go ahead I do offer him 1.6 million. Then we look for a right midfielder because Coppinger's okay um, but I don't know, Guardiola plays there but he's a central midfielder and to be honest we need a right midfielder because Coppinger's decent on the left. And uh, you can see there we have a, a contract, sorry, a contract, a transfer offer from Marcus Tudgai. And to be honest, it was a bit below, well, it was quite a long way below, actually, 230,000. But we accept it anyway. And uh, we go into our second league game of the season away at Middlesbrough, who are actually bottom of the table. I know it means nothing really after a, a solitary game, but you can see there the team is fairly unchanged. And uh, we get off and underway in the changed blue kit. 
and uh, I was quite surprised actually that Middlesbrough were down at the bottom but we give a shot uh, we give a start to Luke Shaw and uh, Matt Darby's here as well and you can see there straight away straight away we get in we get into the lead after five minutes they didn't even touch the ball and uh, we go down their end and score with a brilliant goal a brilliant team goal and then we can see the penalty I don't know what more to say. Somehow that was a penalty. Absolutely no idea how. And uh, Mario Emnes steps up to the spot and he hits the bar with a chipped effort. And then again, for some reason, the ref gives a free kick to us. And uh, that's all there is in the first half. And look at how many nil-nils there are there. It is absolutely crazy. And uh, we really weren't, we really weren't uh, too, too uh, see-through defensively. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. We were pretty strong defensively. That's more like it. But we did still create chances of our own, and uh, we were industrious. And Billy Sharp again, and Majewski there. What a chance that was. And uh, I, I'm still not sussed with him, Majewski. We've got uh, McGugan, who's seemingly much better. And Billy Sharp again there, hits the post. Absolutely brilliant effort from him. Sharp again involved, Derbyshire, and then it's a decent stop from the keeper. But uh, Lewis McGugan seems to be the better of the central attacking midfielders, and Majewski is okay. And you can see... Billy Sharp again involved in the goal. Matt Derbyshire scoring the goal. And uh, a great finish from him. So both of our strikers get onto the score sheet. And we actually give a return to Simon Cox, if you remember from the last episode, was out injured for four weeks. And uh, Mario Emnes hits the post. But here he is, Simon Cox involved. And we were playing really, really well. Some of the football in this game was brilliant. You can see there Cox and Gillett. Right, the shot isn't that good in the end, but it's a brilliant move. Nice interlinking passes between the two of them. Again there, Derbyshire finds McGugan, who goes for the little dinked effort, but it's saved by Parnaby. Then there's a bit of confusion, and uh, in the end it's cleared away by Middlesbrough. But I was really p pleased with this performance. They have a chance at the end there with Emness, but uh, at 2-0... We could have made it three. We could have made it three, and we could have made it four, if I'm honest. We had plenty of chances. We were all over them, really. They had a couple of chances, but I was really pleased that we managed to get the win. And 2-0 uh, it was, and you can see there that after the game, Sunderland accepted our uh, offer for Connor Wickham. And uh, he's only a squad rotation player, which I, I find quite surprising. I'm surprised he's not a maybe a, a, a first-team player or a even a future first team player and you can see there that Hal Robson kind of accepts our contract offer and uh, we accept him into our team so that's going to be good for us we've got Andy Reid who I actually put on the transfer list because there are some players in the team that just weren't pulling their weight and I felt he was one of them and uh, we also put Moosey on the transfer list because he similarly wasn't really doing much. Now I'm considering putting Dexter Blackstock on the transfer list as well because I'm not pleased with him. His performances have been really poor at the moment or might loan him out instead. You can see here we have a transfer offer from Akron and Stanley for Jack Blake. And at 17 years of age, he can go. And this is a massive surprise. Look at this. Lee Camp saying that he feels that he's come to the end of his time at the club and he demands a move in this window which is a massive disappointment, but I'm not going to go and cause uh, corruption, well not corruption, but I'm not going to go and cause controversy, so we do put him up for sale, and then we look at a keeper, and we find this lad, Rob Elliott, in uh, the Premier League, place in Newcastle, he's only 26 years of age, and I, lo I looked at so many keepers, but every one of them seemed to be retiring, or... Uh, or too 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 expensive. So Shea Given demanded thirty thousand pound wages. Yeska Linen was retiring. Hilario was retiring. Kudachini was retiring. So many keepers. And uh, Paddy Kenny was retiring as well. But you can see there we accept uh, Connor Wickham. He is now one of our players. So that is the end of this episode, guys. I am going to be hopefully uploading another video tonight if I can. But if not, I will see you on Friday with the next video after my trip away to the Lake District. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Leave a like and a comment in the section below what you think of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Tim Pazza, that 45 and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.